Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, all right. I really thank God for this great privilege that he has granted me to be with you on the Lord's Day, the Sabbath day with the Kenyatta University uh, Seventh-day Adventist church members and families and friends uh, who are watching us in all the outlets out there. And it's also a privilege for me to speak next to the voice that has spoken before me, uh, Pastor Kikundu, uh, who has been a great mentor for me and for the names that he had mentioned and for the many other uh, ministers who are actively serving God in various capacities. And um, it is not the first time that I got this uh, invitation. Uh, he was trying his level best to bring me to speak to you face to face before we entered into this new normal. Uh, but uh, uh, I did not make it, but God in his own time has allowed me to reach you through uh, the lemonade that Pastor Kikundu just spoke, the blessing that we have in this time to connect through uh, technology. Uh, I want to appreciate and bless all of you who have participated uh, during this worship service uh, in different uh, ways and uh, services. Uh, may God bless you. And it's always a great joy to see our youth actively serving God in their different corners, especially university students. As Pastor Kikundu said, uh, one of my responsibility in the years past was to work with the youth and serving the youth in the uh, public universities has been a great joy in my ministry. And I thank God that he has given me now another chance to connect with university community. Um, I want to wish you happy Sabbath. We are, we are used to that, but I want you uh, to hear also how it is said in Hebrew, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, we say Shabbat Shalom, and uh, Shabbat Shalom um, has to do with uh, uh, the Hebrew word Shalom. As you can see it there, Shalom is peace, peace. So uh, it's not only just a happy Sabbath that we are saying today, but we are pronouncing shalom. We are pronouncing peace. Uh, yes, Sabbath is indeed about shalom. Sabbath is about peace that comes from the Lord of the Sabbath himself, Jesus Christ. And uh, he is the Prince of Peace. Uh, peace is, as Pastor said a while ago, uh, is what many in the world are craving for today. Uh, we have all witnessed how the world has been ravaged by stress, fear, pain, anxiety, depression, and many other negative emotions since the onset of this pandemic. In fact, it is now that uh, uh, even the suicide rates increased during this COVID crisis. A New York uh, Post has published in April the story of this couple that you see on the projection, uh, Patrick and Cheryl. Uh, Patrick um, Cheryl, in fact, was having difficulty breathing and she was tested uh, for COVID-19 virus. Of course, you know, uh, during this time, uh, whatever symptom of a flu can be of suspect uh, of many things. So uh, she was tested for it, but before the result was out, Patrick feared that he and his, uh, it's uh, uh, reported in the news as girlfriend, his girlfriend, who is Cheryl, had contracted coronavirus, he just, that's what he was impressed with. 
and he did one thing. He pulled out his gun and fatally shot Cheryl and turned the gun on himself and committed suicide. But the news also reported that an autopsy was performed, that is, the test was done on their dead body, and unfortunately, they tested negative from the virus. Wow, what a tragedy. It was unwarranted fear that killed this couple, not coronavirus. So that's why we are saying that we can go and on and on and show how peace is highly demanded today. But for a brief moment today, I'd like us to ask one important question. Where do we find that peace amidst this pandemic and its uh, many consequences, challenges that we are surrounded with? The Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus the Christ, who is the Prince of Peace, had told us that during the perilous times of the last days, we'll be exposed to enormous challenges. Yet, he encouraged us with these words, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So this is the statement of Jesus. Please notice in this verse here that Jesus differentiated his peace from the peace that the world gives. Because he says, my peace is not the same as the one that the world gives. So we see the worldly peace on one side and we see the divine peace on the other side. So what is the difference between the two? Let me briefly mention two differences. The first one, the worldly peace is the peace uh, that the world offers is a superficial peace. It is it only attempts to address some of the symptoms of our deep-seated problem. Yes, it is possible to immerse oneself in watching Netflix, uh, playing video games, or using substances and forget what is bothering us. But that is only a superficial treatment of a deep wound. On the other hand, Jesus' peace is deep. It penetrates and crushes the core causes of our chaotic life. It satisfies the soul and it fills the heart with his profound peace, the atmosphere of heaven. So that is our first point of contrast. Another difference is that because the peace this world gives is superficial, it is short-lived. You know, it's superficial. As a result of that, as we can see it, it is short-lived. On the contrary, the peace that God gives, that Jesus' peace is not only deep, but it is also durable. It lasts long. In fact, it is eternal, eternal peace. So, when Jesus said, my peace, he is referring to a deep and durable peace. And he is willing to give that to us. But how can we get this peace? How can we experience it today as we need it so badly? Um, I'd like us to consider five crucial keys, or you may call them also action steps that can help us to experience this deep and durable peace. Let me start with the first key to experiencing God's deep and durable peace. And I'm gonna use the word peace as an acronym and by doing so, my hope and prayer that these five important keys will be uh, printed in our minds. 
The first P uh, stands for ponder. Ponder on the promises of God. And we are going to take one character from the Bible to illustrate each point. And for this point, we are going to look at the story of Peter. Peter is well known for his act of denial. Peter was fearful, fretting, and panicking that he denied his master three times. But uh, that was not the end of his story. This same Peter bounced back from his drastic failure. We see him standing tall and confronting the officials as he proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In fact, in the book of Acts chapter 12, we read Herod the king, after he killed James, with sword, and so that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter. And as we can see, um, Peter was in prison. And not only that Peter was in prison, I'd like us to remember that when we read Acts chapter 12, verse 6 to 7, as it's projected here, he was sleeping. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, it doesn't require to be a nuclear physicist to know that the sword that was soaked with the blood of gems will soon be on Peter's next too. In fact, the verse says in the beginning, as you can see it on the projection, it was in the night before Herod was to bring him to trial that Peter was sleeping. Evidently, Peter's presence in that prison cell was deadly. It was not just um, a brief moment that he could stay in prison and then move out. No, it was a deadly moment. One, he was probably one step away from his death. But what is so amazing in this account is that in that deadly prison, Peter was deadly. In that deadly prison, Peter was dead asleep. The angel had to strike Peter to wake him up. That is the clue that we have there, that he was really dead asleep. You know, that is the peace we are talking about. What a peace. What a peace divine. Deep and durable peace. Peter experienced clearly that peace of Jesus Christ. From here we see a reflection of the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who himself was asleep in the midst of a storm. Jesus was willing to give that peace to his disciples. But then Peter was panicking. But later on, when he realized that peace of God, he was able to experience the same. So this is uh, the answer for the important question that we can ask. How did the panicking Peter experience that kind of profound peace? You know, it's a profound peace that he experienced. And Peter himself, who was panicking before now slipping in the face of death, will tell us the secrets in these words. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Peter wrote, Cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. There is no doubt that Peter pondered on the promises that Jesus gave them, and that led him to experience his peace. So the question for us now, do we also ponder on the promises of God? Do we meditate on them? Here is uh, a pastor from France, and here is an old woman from the United States. In fact, she, uh, she's 90 years old, pretty old. And they have one common experience. Both are COVID survivors, and both testified that pondering on the promises of God helped them to experience God's peace 
when they passed through the shadow of the valley of death. Geneva Wood, uh, this very old woman, as you know, this uh, uh, disease doesn't sit well with the aged people group. So she was 90 and tested positive with this virus was pretty much a death sentence. But here is her, how she described her experience during those difficult moments. She said, if it hadn't been for him, that means God, I could not have done it. And uh, Wood also credited one special doctor who shared Bible scriptures with her daily. She was meditating on Bible scripture daily. And she pointed to that as the anchor point during that selling in the store. And also, Christian Blank, here is uh, the president of uh, uh, the National Council of French Evangelicals uh, in, in France. And after being three weeks in intensive care, he shared his testimony of healing from COVID-19 in the cover story of a French magazine. And one of the questions that Blanc was asked is, what sustained you during your hospital stay? Remember, it was in the intensive unit that he had stayed three weeks. That means he was in a very critical stage. So this was his response. Blanc responded by saying, well, he says, the biblical texts that I read so often, meditated on, and preached to others were for me a rock on which I was able to build my trust and my hope in God. So he hoped in his goodness and faithfulness. And this is the statement that I like the most. He said, I kept one verse in my mind. Isaiah 30 verse 15. Only in returning to me and resting in me, you will be saved. In quietness and confidence is your strength. So both of them shared the same experience. Pondering on the promises of God, meditating on it, helped them to pull through and still remaining strong. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, God's promises are powerful, for God stands back of every promise that he has made. Therefore, let us ponder on the promises of God to experience his profound peace. So that is the first point I'd like us to capture in order to experience God's durable and deep peace. Let's ponder on the promises of God like Peter and these other witnesses. As we move to the second um, key point, now we will find encounter. Encounter the promise giver in earnest prayer. That's the second key to experience the deep and durable peace of the mighty God whom we serve. And we're going to look Esther as our character to illustrate this point. As we can see and remember, recall from the story of Esther, Esther and her people from Judah suddenly found themselves at the verge of being a victim of a genocide. Of course, she was in, in the palace and she will not be the first one to be cleared, but she was concerned about her people. Esther, rather than allowing fear to paralyze her, she stood up and stepped out by faith. She determined to encounter the Prince of Peace, the mighty God, in earnest prayer before entering into the presence of the earthly king. And here is what she said. 
Go. She sent this message. Go. Gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and to hold a fast on my behalf and do not eat or drink for three days. Night or day, I and my young woman will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it's against the law. If I perish, I perish. That encounter, that facing the God of her fathers through fasting and earnest prayer, helped Esther to experience the profound peace of God. She also gained greater confidence and courage to fulfill the crucial mission of saving God's people. Allow me to introduce you to another woman who had a similar encounter with God in an earnest prayer and who also experienced his deep and durable peace. Here is uh, the, her family portrait, as you can see it. She is my auntie. They live in the United States. And on March 15, 2020, she got a phone call from her older son, the one whom you see in the projection seated between her and his father. He was in the hospital and tested positive of COVID-19 virus. And you can imagine how this was a shocking news to the family, to the mother. His mother told me after that, for almost a year, every single day, she was waking up around 2 a.m. in the morning hours, and she was praying and writing poems from the Bible for a duration of one hour or two. That was her experience. And when this storm hit the family, that prayer encounter helped her to experience God's profound peace. It was not easy, but through prayer, her son got healed. Prayer is the key to unlock heaven's storehouse. I like these uh, lyrics from one of uh, the hymns that we uh, that is the favorite of many. It says, Oh, what peace we often forfeit. What needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So my dear brothers and sisters, encountering God displaces fear and fill us. It fills us with faith. It removes anxiety and restores peace in the innermost being of our life. So that's why we are saying encountering the promise giver in prayer like Esther and these other many clouds of witnesses that we have to this truth will help us to experience his deep and durable peace. Now, let's move on to the third key uh, that will help us to experience the deep and durable peace of God, and which is, to, which is allowing God to be God. A stands for allow, allow God to be God, to do his will in our lives, in his own way, at his own time, and like Abraham. We are going to look at Abraham as uh, a case in point to illustrate this important point uh, to experience God's peace. Um, well, as you know, Abraham had exercised a measure of faith when he left his country and followed God. But along the journey, he had several fallouts. And he was struggling with doubt, and he even tried to help God by sleeping with Hagar and producing the promised child by his own effort. But everything was in vain. But later on, when he waited upon God, and when God showed up in his own way at his own time and proved to be the most faithful God in whom he can put his trust, Abraham experienced 
greater faith. And when God now showed up and tested him to present his son as a, as a sacrifice, living sacrifice, on the altar, Abraham experienced it that deep peace which comes only from God because he had learned to allow God be God. That's the only reason why Abraham experienced peace and obeyed God to move on and put his son on the altar without fretting and panicking because of allowing God to be God. Abraham allowed God to be God. I would like us to uh, consider another story. Let me share you this story which has a similar nature. In 2011, a young boy by the name Tugbar, the one that you see in the picture, uh, in the group picture with the red t-shirt, um, who was then a high school student, left Ethiopia with his family to be reunited with their extended family members in the United States. The parents were so happy that their children will now have a good opportunity to get good education and bright future. As you know, when you migrate to um, those developed countries, that could be your wish. And that was the wish of this family. But after a few months, this young boy, Tegbar, went with his cousin to a community swimming pool. They had good times swimming and playing with a ball in the water. But while they were playing, the ball was thrown out of the swimming pool and Tugbar came out to get it. As he made his way back to the swimming pool, accidentally, he slipped on the edge of the swimming pool and fell into the pool. And unfortunately, he was on the shallow side of the floor to hit him on his neck. And that caused him a major spinal cord injury in medical terms at the level of C4 and C5. Wow, that means he could not move his body, shoulder down paralyzed, he could not breathe and swallow by himself, he was unable to speak, he was rushed to the hospital, and he was put on a life support machine. Interestingly, the surgeon who came to uh, do the surgery on his spinal cord told the family that his daughter had a similar accident and eventually died. After the surgery, the doctor said, well, Tegbar, this young man, boy, he became a quadriplegic and he continued to be on the life support machine for some months. At this point, Tegbar and his family found themselves at a crossroad. You can imagine how their dreams were shattered, how they found themselves in the deepest of pain that anyone can experience. But Tegbar and the family alike had a choice to make. One, either to be bitter about life and entertain a victim mentality, or to allow God to be God. Tegbar and his family chose the second and started to experience the peace of God by allowing God to be God. After four months, he started to breathe by himself. He started, after a while, he started also to swallow by himself. And even after 11 months, he regained his voice back. For the first time, he cried out to call his mom. It was not easy. It was not easy. But the family learned to allow God be God, and his peace filled their life. Though 
as I said, Tagbar and his family had faced this storm, allowing God to be God, helped them to experience his peace, allowing God to be God and trusting in him, no matter how difficult the situation was, helped Tagbar to continue his school. And he completed his high school in that um, difficult physical condition. And later, he was able to join his college studies. And in 2020, that is this year, he was able to graduate with the degree of Bachelor of Arts in Sociology. Adam, profound testimony of God's profound peace, allowing God to be God. Allowing God to be God helped him to experience his peace and his provision despite his disability. In fact, two weeks ago, uh, now I think two, three weeks ago, um, one of his sisters, uh, who lives with him, contracted COVID-19 because uh, the sisters work in the medical profession and they are also my cousins. And they told me that they contracted the virus and we were praying and all of us were praying that Tegbar will not contract it. We were praying and God was faithful. He did not. God spared him. God is faithful. Let's allow God to be God. So that is the third point, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, encountering God in prayer should also move us to this step of allowing God to be God, to accept his sovereignty, to show up in his own time and in his own way. Uh, this will lead us now to the next point, our fourth key to experience the deep and durable peace of God which is climbing, climbing the heights, trusting in God like Caleb of the old times. Well, we know the story that when the Israelites manifested a great, great unbelief, especially in that wilderness and wanted to go back to Egypt, it was only Joshua and Caleb who fixed their eyes on God, who is bigger than the giants they were facing. In fact, Caleb did not only believe that God will give them the land, but he said that he wants to occupy the mountainous regions because God has promised it. And as we read the story, in Joshua 14, 6 to 12, here Joshua came uh, and he was allotting the land and Caleb came to him and told him, now give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in those days. That was what he said, give me this mountain. Now give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. He was claiming the promise and he wanted to climb the heights so that he can bring uh, greater testimonies of God's mighty power. We have a great lesson to learn from Caleb today as uh, we seek the peace of God. We cannot experience the deep and durable peace of God while staying in our comfort zones, at our cocoons, no. We can't experience God's peace in the valleys of sin and selfishness. We need to claim God's promises and press on the upward way. Allow me to introduce you to a young man who also experienced God's deep and durable peace when he resolved to climb the hills in his life, trusting in God. Um, As you can see his picture here, his name is Tad Werku. He was on his way 
to be a pop star and had a very promising future in that line. It was in 2012 that he was able to work with a, a, a renowned musicians, uh, stars, and it was very promising for him that he will also soon be a star. However, he realized that God has a higher calling for him and he decided to climb the heights, trusting in God. Here is what he said in an interview that he had with NBC recently. Um, let me project it here. Yes, this is what he said. I was not at peace with the direction things were going. I felt like there was something that I was being called to bigger than where I was heading. So he did not have peace in that condition. But when he resolved to drop everything, yes, Tad left behind the stage of pop music. He went back to school. He studied for another degree in nursing and started working in the emergency room at Loma Linda University Hospital. It was then when he climbed that hill that he got peace. It was then that he again started writing songs from his experience at the emergency room. And now he's a well-known singer experiencing God's peace while climbing that uh, mountain before him, both as a musician and as emergency room nurse, combining these two professions. I'd like to invite you to listen to this brief interview that he gave about his experience. Most of us are lucky if we can find one true passion in life. During this pandemic, many of us are becoming more introspective about our life choices. I've seen life slowly fading away. But in the case of ER nurse and professional musician Tad Warku, he's finding this challenging time to be the perfect convergence of his two passions, music and medicine. And patients and staff at Loma Linda Hospital are grateful for his life choices, especially right now. What a beautiful gift to be able to marry your love for music with your love for healing. Tell me a little bit about that journey. I actually started off as purely a musician, uh, purely a musician in pop soul. So my goal when I started off was to become a famous musician, to quote unquote, make it in the world of music. So after graduating from college, I set out, uh, got into an artist development deal and, and set out to take on the world. I was headlining my first sold out show at Yoshi's San Francisco. And that kind of pulled this, uh, that kind of changed things for me and said, hey, maybe this can be a reality. And so I, I went down that path, linked up with an incredibly uh, talented group of musicians who were, who were nom nominated for awards, all sorts of stuff. And that became my production team. I recorded my first pop soul album. This was 2012. And I was getting ready to head out on a national international tour that had just been funded. And I actually wasn't at peace with the direction things were going. I felt like there was some, there was something that I was being called to that was bigger than where I was heading. And so through a set of circumstances, I actually stepped back from music, uh, gave back all my national international tour funding, shelved the album, told my team the, the, the decisions I had made. And that actually ultimately led me back to being back in prerequisite classes, uh, taking nursing. So it seems like the perfect blend of two passions, music and healing, and the fact that you can combine the two and really make a success from it. What I didn't expect was through the experiences I started having in the hospitals and really interacting with people in, in such vulnerable times in their lives that that would inspire me again to write music that that was mission, that had a purpose beyond what i had ever experienced as a songwriter before i can see through the stain love remain and through all of this what what has been your silver lining i can use the music to heal 
people that never came into the hospital. And I think that that spirit that's in the music is the same thing that you're actually using to try to take care of somebody in that emergent situation. Yes, helping others in perfect harmony. For NBC Care Silver Linings, I'm Sandy Newton. Wow, I believe the Lord has spoken to you through that uh, powerful testimony. It was not easy for him to drop everything when everything was seemingly uh, promising. But he, like Caleb, asked God to give him that mountainous land. And he climbed the heights. And now he's sharing um, his talents in a very productive way while having the peace of God in his heart. So now let's move on to the very last one, which is encourage to deeply experience the deep and durable peace of God. The last point that we have states encourage others to live for God. And the character that we are going to look at is none other than Elizabeth. Well, looking at Elizabeth and her husband Zechariah, they had prayed to get a child for a long time, as we can read it from the Bible, but their prayer seemed went unanswered as they advanced in years. In fact, the Bible says, well advanced in years. They thought that raising a child is not their portion. So, they left that prayer aside and their ministry continued. Both were serving in the temple of the Lord. However, one day God surprised the couple and told them that his divine alarm clock had indicated the arrival of the right time for them to have a child. Wow. It was totally beyond their expectation and they were baffled. But as we can see here, that is how God works. And Elizabeth, who was well advanced in years, conceived. It was not an easy experience, though, you can imagine, when an old woman is a pregnant. Even for the young ones, pregnancy could be a serious challenge. So while she was waiting anxiously for the due dates, God performed another miracle. Angel Gabriel was sent to a virgin girl and told her that she will conceive also without any sexual intimacy and will bring forth a son who shall be called Jesus, who will save the whole world from their sins. Of course, Mary bombarded Gabriel with her questions, but here is an interesting line from Gabriel's reply. Now indeed, it says in uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 36 and 37, he told her, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and that is now the sixth month for her, who is called barren. For God, nothing will be impossible. Gabriel surely referred Mary to Elizabeth, and you know that Mary did not waste time. Right after the conversation, when we read Luke chapter 1 verse 39, she arose in those days and went into the hill country with Hest to the city of Judah and entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Undoubtedly, Mary went to Elizabeth to see what God has done in the life of that old barren woman and be encouraged by it so that she can stop worrying and continue believing that God will also fulfill his purpose in her life. But at the same time, at the same time, when Elizabeth met Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. As they stayed together for three months, you can imagine Elizabeth was six months pregnant when she was visited by Mary and Mary stayed there for another three months. That means she stayed with her until Elizabeth gave birth. 
And I can imagine when they stayed together, they continued, uh, Elizabeth continued encouraging Mary, telling her, look, God is doing this in my life. Be encouraged. He will do it in your life too. And they both experienced God, God's deep and durable peace. What a testimony of Elizabeth being a source of encouragement to Mary. As the same time when she encourages Mary, she was also herself experiencing the deep and durable peace of God. I'd like to finish with this story to illustrate this point further. Uh, Louis I state, the one that we see her picture on the projection, was another person who experienced the peace of God when she encouraged others. We know that uh, she, out of one of the darkest hours of her life, wrote a song. She saw her husband. At one time, they were together with her husband and their little daughter. They were enjoying by the ocean side on a picnic day. But they saw a drowning boy cried for help in the ocean, not far from the shore. So her husband, Mr. State, rushed to save him, but was pulled under the terrified boy. And both drowned as Louisai and her daughter watched them helplessly. During the sorrowful days that followed, the words of this hymn, came from the grief-stricken heart of this woman. We know these words. It says, it's so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promises, just to know that saves the Lord. This woman did not only write this song, but she went to Africa after that tragic incident and became a missionary to encourage many others to know the peace of God, to accept the love of God, and to join him in his kingdom. So for her, taking that missionary trip after that tragic incident, which dismantled her her vision, her, her, her comfort, and her, her wishes in life helped her to come out strong when she encourages other people to trust in the same God. So sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promises, just to know the saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust him more. Encouraging others, helped her to write this song from her experience of God's deep and durable peace. So my dear brothers and sisters, as I conclude, I'd like to present all these five points before you once again. We need peace today. We need God's deep and durable peace more than any time before. How do we get it? When we ponder upon the promises of God. When we encounter the promise giver in an earnest prayer. When we allow God to be God even despite what we are facing as we continue praying. And also, climbing the heights, trusting in God, saying no to the worldly things and to the valley of sin and selfishness, but choosing to march on the apart way. And lastly, when we encourage others to live for God, 
then we will experience God's deep and durable peace. And as I finish, I'd like to leave you with this benediction. Now, may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times in every way. The Lord be with you all. Amen.